you are watching awesome welcome to the february uh, astro insights um really looking forward to uh to giving you the details of what is happening this month because it's going to be a month where we will finally feel some relief we're finally going to feel um a sense of uh, relief but it was interesting right before i went live i um I grabbed one of my uh, my decks and oh, I pulled a card. <laughs> this was the card. Triggers. <clears throat> Which is very fitting for uh, a Mercury retrograde that we are in. Uh, let me quickly pull up all of the details of the month. Hold on, let me rearrange my screen a little bit. <clears throat> So I can also see your comments as they come in. Hold on. Okay. Awesome. So, what do I wanted to say about this card? About this card. Triggers. Um, and it said that click in your head, heart, and soul are reminders to stop, think, and integrate. And that is really the message of a Mercury retrograde. That's really the message of um, going within. You know, in our society, we um, we generally don't stop and think. We always go, like always on the go. We have to, uh, when we've wrapped up one thing, we have to think about the next thing. And it's like, go, go, go all the time. And then a Mercury retrograde comes around and it's like, wait a minute. We need to slow down. We need to pause. We need to think. Um, and I was actually just writing a social media post um, for today, really about Mercury retrograde, that it is a blessing. Because if we don't have these moments to pause, to think, to, to integrate everything that we have learned, everything that we have done, then you can't move forward. Like I was on the phone with a client today and uh, we talked about these periods of rest and I said, if you don't allow yourself to rest when the cosmos is really telling you to rest, then when an uh, opportunity period shows up, you cannot fully use that. You cannot fully embrace that um, that feeling and that opportunity simply because you haven't rested, you haven't taken the time to integrate, to slow down. So these next three weeks when Mercury is in retrograde, really allow yourself to go there, really allow yourself to slow down, to think, to regroup, to reconnect. It's really all the things that has the word re in front of it to allow yourself to um, yeah, to rest and to uh, to reflect. I'm quickly going to check if everything is running smoothly because I see a few errors um, show up on my um, screen. So um, hold on, I'm working on it. You know, it's Mercury retrograde, so obviously, ah, uh, see, I don't see the comments, but the comments are coming in. Uh, Students and set triggers all over the place. <laughs> yes, they are. For some reason, I don't see your um, comments up here. So I will um, put it there. Okay. So um, during this Mercury retrograde, um, I'll set rest and reset. That's what I'm doing this month. Really, really good. Um, this is really a time and that's why i mentioned in the comments that for your business this is a very powerful and potent month not when you look at it from the perspective of the patriarchy who is like pushing and delivering and doing and um always be on the move this is really a time 
to go deeper into the deeper layers of your own unconscious but also of your business like see how you have been reaching out to your uh, to your clients or potential clients is really about communication and, and community so it's a good time to um, be very critical and very um, not judgmental there's a very very um, big difference between being judgmental and being critical um, when you take a critical look at how we communicate in what in what tone but also the way that you reach out to people that can really help you to um, to see the patterns and the things that maybe aren't working or the things that are working um, I remember yesterday I had a conversation with one of my um, business besties and um, we were talking about like ex extending your community but at the same time are we having everybody that you need within your community and um, literally the moment that that happened i don't know what happened but one of my posts it didn't went viral but it did like 400 uh, percent better than it did before and this is like the power of of not pushing me not wanting that post to be like super um well received but just wanting to inform people and at the same time you create that ripple effect so how are you using your words um and how are you using the way that you um that you put your knowledge out into the world and how you are connecting with your customers with your clients um which is a really good time to do that during this uh this mercury retrograde i have no idea why i don't see anything um pop up this is really annoying which is like i will just have to switch screens to um to see <laughs> their comments uh, coming in so let's dive into uh into february so what i mentioned is february is really a month that feels <clears throat> like we can actually get stuff down done but it's mostly on the um, it's not so much the visible side of getting things done but it's more like the underlying um uh, things that are moving and, and shifting this month we have a huge cluster of planets in Aquarius. Actually, at one point we have six of those planets uh, in. in uh, did I say Capricorn? I'm in Aquarius. <laughs> um, we have like six planets in Aquarius, which is a huge amount, and it hasn't happened. Say um, the last time it happened was 1962. So this is quite a special, a special month. Uh, so to start with, yesterday we had uh, Venus entering Aquarius. Now Venus rules our relationship, but it also rules finances, the way we look at money. So when Venus was in Capricorn, it was, um... <laughs> yes, Susan, it's a very good time to have technical issues. I was actually prepared for this, so <laughs> um, we're just going to work with it. But I actually see your comments coming in a different screen, so I really have to like look around right now. Um, when Venus was in Capricorn, it was more restricted. It was more following the rules and um, don't do anything sudden and, and stay in lane, stay in your own lane, and and don't be, um, yeah, be super practical. That's basically what Venus in in Capricorn is. Now, when Venus has moved yesterday, it moved into Aquarius. It feels more independent it feels more things that i can do so also within your romantic relationship it is more a feeling of um we're two individuals coming together so not needing the other person so much not needing them to like fulfill you you understand your own individual um foundation and what you need to do the same with your money where capricorn may have restricted you and be too tight Aquarius more like okay how can we expand the way that we that we um, use our money I wouldn't say spend per se but how um, how can you be creative with what you do with your money also how money comes in like it's it's a more of a playful energy um, it's more of an um, expansive and this is really a time to look at your finances and create a story that works for you that's very unique for you so it doesn't matter what everybody else is doing 
this is a good time to look at your financial situation um, and reshape that, rewrite that story. Again, Mercury retrograde, so I would not advise any um, major spendings or, or major um, um, things that you haven't thought about before. That doesn't mean you cannot invest, you cannot invest in, uh, spend it on anything, but just be a little bit more, um, more mindful about it. Then on February 6th, we have Venus in Aquarius squaring Uranus in Taurus. Now this is a, an interesting one. It's, it's sudden excitement. So usually a square is a little bit of a harder aspect, but it's also an aspect that comes up quickly that you don't really have much um, influence over. So this is like feeling sudden urges to change your relationship, to spice it up, to um, wanting things to move, wanting things to change. And this is not just the smooth and um, small change, but this like radical changes, radical shifts. And this can be in mindset too. So radical shift in a relationship doesn't mean that you like, I don't know, <laughs> think outside the box, what is possible, but it's really um, on a mindset level too. Like how can you shift your mindset and be um, in, in a very different way? Um, usually when you are satisfied in a relationship, it doesn't create a lot of drama and upheaval. Um, if there are parts in the relationship that might need some work, this is a time where they're like illuminated. Um, and because Uranus in, in Taurus can get very bullheaded, um, there's like a stubbornness that is uh, connected to it. So make sure that you tune in with your partner and that you talk about this and that you understand what, uh, what is happening for you on an internal level. Then on uh, February 10th, we have the Aquarius cluster or the Aquarius stallion, as we call it. We have the sun, the moon, Mercury in retrograde uh, and Venus. Those are the uh, slower moving planets um, that are clumped together. And then we also have Jupiter and Saturn uh, in Aquarius and they're all like squeezed together. Um, and this is really giving us the uh, it's almost like the, the go ahead sign that after 2020, where we have faced so many questions, where we were wondering so many things, this is a time where start starting to find the answers. I mean, we're not going to find the answers in one day. We're also not going to find the answers in one year, but this is a time where we start to see solutions. We start to see change. We start to understand um, what is happening and how we can um, move forward. On that same day, we have Mars in Taurus squaring that gigantic Aquarius uh, cluster. And this can be, um, I wrote in, in the forecast, I wrote stomp, throwing tables upside down and stomping the feet on the ground. That's basically what Mars in Taurus is. Um, but this is like an energy that we can use and, and, and benefit from where um, it's like it, it wants to it wants to change, it wants to do it, and it wants to do it in, well, a little bit of an aggressive way, which is not the best way, but sometimes some anger, some release of anger will help us to move forward. Now, the in, well, the, the side note to this is, um, we had a few hard Mars aspects um, in the last few weeks. Now, globally, we have seen how that plays out. So, during this um, this square, we can also prepare ourselves that there will be things happening again um, in society, whether it is riots, demonstrations, um, there's an uprising, there is a wanting to change, especially with Mars, is an aggressive energy. Uh, and if we're conscious of it, we can channel it, that aggression, to change. Um, but as we know, there are people who feel the need that that aggression is used against other people, other businesses, um, um, people with different um, views than you have, than they have. Um, so it is also a month where we have to be mindful to see what is uh, what is happening around this. Not saying that I predict that something bad is going to happen, but it is 
that um, that Mars at Mars in in um, in Taurus, which is bullheaded, it's, it's angry, it's frustration, and if it's not channeled in a healthy way, um, well, we've seen what happened um, in the past few weeks, or I've seen the past few months. Um, let me just double check if everything. Yep, Mars still running. So the next day on February 11th, we have the new moon in Aquarius in 23 degrees. Uh, Aquarius so it happens at 2.06 p.m. Eastern Central Time and uh, 8 o'clock, um, 6 minutes past 8 o'clock European Time. Um, for some reason, it's not showing up properly. Well, of course, it's not. It's Mercury. <laughs> so the Aquarius new moon is really like this huge reset button. It is a way for us to, like I said, 2020 gave us a lot of questions and we couldn't find the answers. Uh, 2021 will help us to find the answers and this new moon in Aquarius is the revolutionary thinker, the thinking outside the box. So it really helps you to like ignite your inner source of creativity. Because what worked before definitely doesn't work anymore. It's, it's not just on the society level, but also in your business. Um, you might have had things that in the past always worked, always um, got responses or, or um, even like a program that you, that you launched and this time around, it's crickets. Because everybody's feeling this up level. Everybody's feeling this new way of doing things, new way of thinking about things. So it's really a good time to look at how can you bring more originality into your work? How can you stand out and be even more unique than you already are? Everybody is unique, but how can you embrace that uniqueness? How can you um, you think, uh, embrace your quirkiness? Like just quirk, quirky, I said quirky. <laughs> See, this is Mercury doing all this communication stuff. <laughs> quirky. <laughs> um, do the things that light you up. Even though other people would think you're crazy, this is what works. And this will actually help you to attract the people that resonate with you because you are unapolog unapologetically yourself. Um, there's a little side note to this um, where Aquarius can also get um, A little bit too extreme where it thinks it has to be original it has to think outside the box so it goes too far so make sure that you stay uh, stay within your um uh, within your own path so don't expect that this like you have to revolutionize revolutionize everything because remember we still have mercury in retrograde so slow down don't don't like run um which is not something aquarius likes to do anyway uh, on February 12th, we have the Lunar New Year, which is mostly celebrated in um, in China and countries around China. And we are starting the Year of the Ox. Um, and it's the Year of the Metal Ox. And it's really um, a very dependable and determined energy. It's very patient. It's very ambitious. It can also be a little bit stubborn and not really willing to go super fast. So that's like the, the flip side to it. And it lasts like this whole uh, lunar new year. It lasts for a, a year until next year, um, around February. Now, February 14th. Yes, it's Valentine's Day, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Um, it is really a day where you can tune into problem solving. Is Mercury retrograde conjunct to Jupiter in Aquarius. Now, Jupiter helps to see things in a different light and helps to expand things. So if there is a problem, because um, this is, um, we're over the halfway point on February 14th. So it will help you to see things in a different way. Um, it will give you insights on, on, um, on what is happening and how you can move through those things. Now, this happens three times. The first one was on January 12th. So take a moment to also think back on what happened on January 12th. And then the next time that they come together is on March 5th. And that's probably when you feel this 
um, this urge to really go again and you feel this um, momentum building up. On February 17th, we have what I call like innovative shifts um, that are occurring. It is Saturn in Aquarius that squares Uranus in Taurus. And this is the first of three squares that is happening this year with the first one on February 17th, the second one on June 4th, 14th, and the third one on December 24th, Christmas Eve. We have an interesting aspect again, but these two planets are slower moving planets. So it is not like we only feel this happening on January 17th, we actually have already started feeling this from the beginning of the year. Saturn is structure, Uranus is innovation. So where structure and innovation meet each other, there is this like, uh, friction. and I, I talked about this a lot in my, um, in the 2021 forecast, but this is where um, it's, it's restructuring but it happens in such a fast and, and almost violent way that we're kind of overtaken by the fact how fast things are crumbling and, and needing to be re rebuilt and new things are coming up and we can't really catch up with all of the things that are happening. So that's really the Saturn Aquarius energy, which really is throughout the year. The, the dates that I mentioned are when they peak, um, but we have we see this throughout the year and um, it also helps you to tune in to uh, when you look at yourself on your per on a personal level where can you change the structure where can you um, be innovative in your own life in your own business to create this um, this better world um, then on February 18th, the sun enters Pisces, and I wrote down enchanted worlds. Pisces is the dreamy, is the, the um, hey Anna, good that you're here. Uh, Pisces is the, is a dreamer. It's, it's, it's the um, tuning into your own intuition. It is fantasizing. So after Aquarius, where Aquarius is more, it rules the mind. So it is the thinking part. It is the thinking, like literally thinking outside the box. And then Pisces is more of the dreamer. It's a dancer. It just flows and it, um, it doesn't take things very seriously. It's like, it's very much floating around in the imaginary world. So use that to really hone into your intuition and fantasize, dream, and, and like dream big, but not in a way where it's like practical dream big, but just let yourself dream, let yourself go and really hone into that, um, that, that um, sweet and softness that, that Pisces has. Just a little bit of a, a side note, um, at this time, boundaries will become a little bit more difficult to uphold. So if you met, if you see that people are trying to push your boundaries and trying to uh, see if they not take advantage, but um, be persuaded into something, make sure that you have you stay firm within your own boundaries, the boundaries that feel safe, because especially in Pisces season, that tends to get like it's a water sign because that tends to get a bit more um pushed around so make sure that you uh, you connect to that then on february 20th we have mercury going direct in Aquarius. yes it takes until march 13 until it's out of its shadow so when it um hasn't traveled in the same uh, degrees as it, as it has been before um but really a time to start moving forward stop start making more uh, actionable steps um, instead of just thinking about it and reflecting, this is the time to actually start, um, start moving forward and, um, um, I was just reading what I wrote. <laughs> so it's, it really helps you to, um, to get like a different, different perspective, different view on, uh, on the things. And if you have really looked at the way that you communicate and that you reach out to people, it will help you to um, to see that in different light and start implementing those, uh, those steps. Then on February 25th, we have Venus entering Pisces. Um, the closer the Venus is to the Sun, the Sun is in, in Aquarius and moves into Pisces, the closer that Venus is to the Sun, the faster it moves. So it 
really only stays in um, in one uh, in, in Aquarius for three almost three weeks. Um, so it also already moves into Pisces. Now this is where it becomes more gentle, more compassionate, more loving, more romantic, uh, especially in relationships. It's more um, seeing everything as a whole. It's it's feeling it. Um, it's less hard. It's, it's like I said with the sun. It's a very soft, uh, soft energy. This is where you might need to um, be a bit more mindful with your money. Because Pisces like to escape and not look at the facts. <laughs> so make sure that whenever you do something, uh, you have uh, triple checked it uh, before you go ahead. Because um, Pisces likes to escape in that dream. Like I said, when Venus is in Pisces, it's um, it just likes to like fiddle around. It's almost like as I just see a fairy in front of me, like a fairy, like na -na -na -na. not taking things too seriously. Um, so if you have any major uh, financial things come up, make sure that you ground yourself first and really stay connected and rooted um, in um, in what is happening. Then we close the month off. We have a short month, uh, February 27. We have the full moon in Virgo. And the reason why I mentioned that this is a very potent um, month for your business is because we had the new moon in Aquarius, which is like setting the intentions, expanding, uh, really thinking outside the box. And now Virgo comes in. A Virgo is an earth sign, very practical. So whatever you, the intentions that you set on the Aquarius new moon, Virgo will help you to make them happen because Virgo is practical. It is determined and it really is organized. So it will help you to get the things done. Um, it's really like the, the practical reinforcements that we need to help um, the, uh, the intentions to bring them into the world and to help it to elevate the things that you've done because we can dream and think all we want, but in the end, things have to happen. Uh, Mercury is out of retrograde, so this full moon really helps you to do that. And because it's also about releasing the full moon really illuminates all the details, all the little steps that need to happen. And at the same time, it um, it helps you to release everything that is uh, the unnecessary distractions. Like I said, Virgo is very practical, so it helps you to see like, okay, what is distracting me and then release that, let that go, because we don't need any of that. So that is the month of February. Um, it's reflective and it's taking action. It's taking action on, um, it's like under the water, <laughs> under the surface, we're taking the action. When Mercury goes, uh, goes direct again, you can start taking more action, start putting things forward and, and out into the world. So that is it for this month. Um, before I close off, I want to share with you a new offering that I am putting out and that I'm really excited about because I believe that everybody should have an idea of what is coming and what is ahead of them. So what I've created is what's called the strategy calendar. It is a complete calendar with in about like 40 to 30 to 40 pages uh, of a document that has every detail of your specific um, calendar. So combine that with, um, Susan said, well, that was a lot for a little month. Yes, it's a lot, but it's, it's really good. And that's also why um, I am putting this offer out there because I want everybody to have this document where they can see what is happening each month what are the days that they, um, what are the opportunity periods? What are the days to rest? What are uh, the moments of reflection? Where is Mercury retrograde happening? Where are the new and the full moons happening? How can you harness the energy so that you can use it? It is not an excuse to do nothing or an excuse to say like, oh, but Mercury is doing this and this and that. No, when you know where it's happening and what is happening, it helps you to tune in and to go with the energy. I mean, we all have free will. 
to say like we reject it or we go um, we flow with it and it helps you to flow with it and it guarantee will save you tons of time a lot less frustration um i wouldn't say like everything will be a smooth ride because this is life and there will always be unexpected factors but to have this document to have this 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 calendar with everything in it that you need for you personally it will help you tremendously to navigate whatever comes your path because you know where your energy is used best in that month and it breaks down the months into weeks you have a calendar depending on what you prefer you can have a six month detailed or 12 month um, a little bit more broad but still very uh, very detailed so if you want more information i will put uh, the link below and you can uh, you can check it out before we um, before you get the calendar we have a 30 minute intake where we will go over what are your goals for the next month so i can specifically look at the things that you want to put forward in this um, in this coming months so it helps you tremendously to move your business and to understand just flip over open the document and see okay so this is a time where i'm supposed to be resting so you're not resisting the rest and you get recharged for the time where there are the opportunity period coming so I love to see all of you be successful, to help you to streamline your business, to streamline when you do what. Because running a business is supposed to be joyful and it's supposed to be graceful. And if you're not doing that yet, if you're not enjoying it yet, you simply haven't cracked the code yet. And that's why I'm here. So I want to wish you an amazing day. I will pop the, um, the link in the comments and um if you're watching the replay let me know what your insights are and i can't wait to connect with you again next week bye bye